Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials. Today we're going to have a look at how to create a dynamic object. What this means is you are not going to create an object or add an object to your form by using your tool palette. So you are going to write code to create this object while your program is running. In other words, we are creating this object during runtime. So have a look at one of your programs and you'll see at the top are all the objects that you have on your form and each one of these have a type next to it. So a button is T button, an edit is T edit, a reach edit is T reach edit. Now what these are is like a little template for these buttons and edit boxes and reach edits. And when you add it to your form, you are adding the basic template of these objects. So let's take a button for example, it will have a certain size and it will have a certain height. You can see what the default values of this template is in your object inspector. So for example, if you add a button to your form, it will be enabled and it also will be visible because the visible property would be set to true. But you are able to make changes to this property here in the object inspector or as we did in the previous lesson by using code. But now we're going to use code to create the object so it won't be visible on your form when you start your program. But once you click on one of the events, it will become visible. The first thing you need to decide is when do you want it to become visible. And that is where you will place the code that we'll go through just now. So if you just want an object to display on the form, then you won't have an event link to it. Like for example, rich edit or an edit box. We don't want something to happen when these objects are clicked. However, maybe like a button, you want something to happen when it is clicked. And then you need to have an event link to it. If I click on this summary button, I go to events in the object inspector, I can see the on click event there for this button. If I double click in here, it takes me to the event with all my code in it. But now we're going to have to create our own procedure to create this event for the new button that we will create. The first thing you would have to do is to declare this new object. So I have decided to create a button. So I am giving it a name here as you would name it in the object inspector. We're now going to give it a name by declaring this button. And my data type for this button is going to be T button as I want to use the template of a button that I usually add to my form. So here I've declared my button. Now I want to create an event for this button. And I'm going to copy out an existing event for a button, for an on-click event. I'm going to paste it here, but I'm going to change the name here. So it says my dynamic click. I don't want to use the same name as the button name. I want to use a new name, but I'm going to use my dynamic and then just keep the click there. So it is different from the name of the object. Once you have done this, push Control shift c and you will see the event opens up for you to start coding in. Remember when you push Control shift c start with the control, hold it in, then the Shift, and then the C. And at the end you will let them go all together at once. So what you have in front of you now is called the skeleton code. If you are just adding an object to the form and you do not need it to do something when it's clicked, you will not create a procedure. But you still do need to make sure that you declare the object. You now need to decide when do you want this button to appear or this dynamic object of yours. And this will happen in another event. So if you wanted it to appear when the program starts, you'll put the following code in form on activate. If you want this object to appear when a button is clicked, then you will put the following code in that button. And where we place this code, this is called instantiating the object. We are going to create this object in the RAM of the computer. Now there's a little tip here on how to create this line of code. It is very important 
as it has to run first before this button can do anything. So let's say my button needs to appear when the reset button is clicked. I'm going to highlight my declaration of my button. I'm going to copy it and then I'm going to paste it in the event where I want it to appear. Now I'm going to add to that colon an equal sign to create an assignment statement. And after my T button, I'm going to add dot create. In here, I'm going to put the name of the form. So in this case, it was called FRM contact. You can also see it declared there. Now you need to decide on what you want this new object to appear. So I'm showing you this example. Maybe I want it to appear here on the form. Maybe I want to display it on the budget tab sheet or the Gold Reef City one. And that will now be the parent of this object. So let's have a look at the structure of this program. I have clicked on the radio group. As you can see, it's highlighted here and it's indented underneath the budget. So budget is the parent of all these objects. You can also see that PGC main, the page control, is the parent then of all three of these tab sheets. And my form here is the parent of a rich edit, a bitmap button, as well as the page control. So once you have instantiated the object, the next would be to allocate a parent. And you have to decide where you want this new button to appear. In this example, the parent is now the panel called PNL display. So my dynamic button will appear on the panel called PNL display. Once we have instantiated the object, we will not use T button anymore. From now on, you will use the name of your object and allocate values to its properties according to the question. In this question, we were asked to place the dynamic button 10 points from the top and then we also had to set the left property according to the left property of another button called BTN first, plus then the width of that button, plus another five points just to space it out. And on this dynamic button, I want the words click me to appear. So therefore I have assigned that to the caption of my new dynamic button. It's a good time to save and run your program. And you will now click on this event. So in this case, it's a button called BTN Create Dynamic Button. I'm going to click on that button and my new button called My Dynamic will appear on the panel. Before this new button of mine is going to do anything, there are a few more steps that we need to take. When we add a button to the form and we double click on it, it links the on-click event of this button to the procedure that we're creating. So this one here is called procedure BTN add click. Now we need to write code to do this. So we're going to use our dynamic button name dot on click is assigned to and then we're going to put our procedure name there that we created earlier on. This is called binding the event and this will also happen where you have instantiated the object. I'm going to start with the name of my object, dot unclick is assigned to, and then I'm going to put the name of that procedure that I created earlier on, on the right of the assignment state. Now you can complete this event for your dynamic object and decide what it needs to do. The code in this procedure will look the same as any other procedure that you have coded in before. It can have its own local variables, it can make use of objects on your form, and it can also make use of show messages or anything else you have done before. If you want to remove the dynamic objects from your form, you will have to free it from the RAM because when we instantiated the object, we created it in the RAM. So the code to free the object is just my dynamic, the name of your object, dot free, and that will make it disappear from your screen. You are now ready to start the activity dynamic objects. If this program was successful, you should only have one button on your form when your program starts. When you click on that button, another button appears. You click on that, we create a panel, we click on the panel and we start seeing that picture. 
Hope this helped you, great tens. Thank you for watching Dandelion Delphi tutorials. Please leave some comments if there's anything else that you need. Hope to see you soon.